It's just something that needs to be done. Janet Jackson disappointed her LGBTQ plus fans in 2002 when she recorded Feel It Boy with Beanie Man. The dance hall star has received countless complaints over the years due to his aggressively homophobic lyrics. Janet claimed that she had no idea about his anti-LGBTQ plus reputation at the time, but you'll be shocked by just how much media attention Beanie Man has gotten for his homophobia and how it's affected his career. In the summer of 2002, Feel It Boy was climbing the charts all over the world. It only reached the top 10 in the UK, but it ended up spending 12 weeks on the US Billboard Hot 100. It was produced by Pharrell Williams, The Neptunes, and it helped make Beanie Man an international name. But even though his music was completely idolized in the Caribbean, the international community was not as accepting of it. As he became more well known, people discovered that a number of Beanie Man songs contained incredibly homophobic lyrics. He incited brutality against gay and lesbian people, often calling for them to be wiped off the face of the earth. When this came out, everyone obviously began to wonder why an LGBTQ plus icon like Janet would want to associate herself with Beanie Man. She'd always been seen as a huge ally of the community. When asked about her own sexuality, Janet used to say that she didn't mind people thinking that she was gay, adding that people were going to believe what they wanted. She even refused to changed the lyrics of a romantic song on her 1998 album Velvet Rope. Apparently, her record company tried to talk her out of it because the song was directed toward a girl, but she loved the song the way it was and said that it was a reality for a lot of people. So if she was so supportive of the LGBTQ plus community, then why did she collaborate with an artist that was known as the opposite of that? In 2004, she finally gave a reason. When speaking to Genre Magazine, about meeting up with Beanie Man, she claimed that she had no idea about his controversial past. She explained that if she had known, she wouldn't have worked with him. It was shocking to her. They were with the same label, so she felt that she should have known. But she added that at the time, she wished that someone from the company would have told her knowing how she felt about the gay community. Janet's apology was generally accepted and she continued to be adored by her LGBTQ plus following. But her ex collaborator, on the other hand, struggled to escape his homophobic reputation. Beanie Man's career was affected by his cruel lyrics for a long time, and although he apologized more than once to the LGBTQ plus community, he has never been truly forgiven for a number of shocking reasons. For one thing, he would often go back on his word. In some interviews, he talked about how he was sorry about how offensive some of his songs were, and in other interviews, he claimed that he had never apologized to the community. On top of that, people also questioned the reasoning behind behind his apologies. Had he genuinely changed the way he felt about queer people, or was he just apologizing because his concerts kept getting canceled or interrupted by protesters and it was affecting his financial revenue? The backlash against him may sound extreme to some people, but you honestly won't believe the truly insane and hurtful things he would sing about LGBTQ plus people. His lyrics were totally brutal, and it wasn't surprising that some people felt scared and unsafe when they heard them. In one of his songs, he wrote, some pretty terrible things about ending the lives of gay people. In another, he used a derogatory term for lesbians and saying that they should all be hung with a long piece of rope. Other lyrics are just too offensive and rude to even repeat. In the early 2000s, he started to get cancellations in the UK thanks to an LGBTQ plus organization called Outrage. In 2004, he finally issued an apology and a statement presented by his record label Virgin. But leaders of the organization said that it was just a stunt and an attempt to save his career from collapse. The statement said that while Beanie Man's lyrics were very personal, he didn't write them with the intent of purposely hurting or maligning others, and that he offered his sincerest apologies to those who might have been offended, threatened, or hurt by his songs. An activist at Outrage who'd been calling out Beanie Man for years was not satisfied with the apology though. He said that it was so vague that it didn't even mention what he was apologizing for, and that it contained no explicit regret 
threats about his intentions to harm gay people. Another campaigner agreed and said that the apology rang hollow when he was still making money from his sentiments to take the lives of members of the LGBTQ plus community. Two years later, Beanie Man sat down with the British newspaper, The Independent, to talk about the meaning behind the lyrics. He'd recently had a lot of performances canceled, including big ones on award shows like the MTV Video Music Awards and the MOBO Awards. In his interview, he attempted to say that people had misunderstood the meaning of the offensive terms he used in his songs. He claimed that he was not referring to gay people, he was referring to criminals who touch children inappropriately. He explained to the news outlet that what they had in Jamaica was not the same as in England, where gay could mean that two men live together. According to Beanie Man, in Jamaica, gay meant non-consensual intimate activity. He went on to share that the word was used to describe a big man who went into the ghetto and picked young people who had nothing and then gave them money in exchange for you know what. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I don't think his explanation really makes sense and it didn't make sense to the interviewer either. He wrote that if the topic of harm against Jamaican youth was important as Beanie Man made it out to be, then it was strange that his views on that subject weren't more explicit in his music. He also asked why Beanie Man chose to use those derogatory terms for gay people when he knew that his listeners wouldn't be able to recognize them as words that were being used strictly to refer to people who harm children. Also, if he was just talking about big man going into the ghetto to commit unspeakable crimes, then why did he say what he said about gay women? I mean, things just really didn't add up. The following year, it was reported that Beanie Man and various other Caribbean artists had signed an agreement to stop performing anti-gay content. It was called the Reggae Compassionate Act, but he later denied signing it. So there continued to be protests against his concerts and there continued to be show cancellations in Europe, North America, and New Zealand. In 2012, it seemed like Beanie Man was attempting to make an apology to the LGBTQ plus community once again. He released a video addressing his earlier lyrics and he shared that he had respect for each and every human being, including gay and lesbian people. Do not fight against me for some song that I sing 20 years ago. However, in future interviews, he explained that he wasn't saying sorry to the queer community. He issued a press release stating that he never apologized. He clarified that what he was trying to say was that gay people should leave him and other artists alone and not blame them for what they'd said when they were young. In 2016, Beanie Man was scheduled to perform at a music festival in New Zealand. An LGBTQ plus news outlet called GayNZ.com arranged with his management to have a phone interview with him in which they discuss his homophobic lyrics. However, as soon as Beanie Man realized the topic of the interview, he immediately hung up just seconds into the interview. So I guess by that point, he had enough of the subject. Nowadays, he doesn't talk about it at all. He just released a new album in the fall of 2023. And in an interview with Billboard magazine, he was held as the king of dance hall. The 50-year-old also had kind of a renaissance when his 1997 song, Who Am I, became part of a social social media trend called the Sim Sima Challenge. Online users, including celebrities, would challenge their friends to finish the lyrics of the chorus of that song, which started with the word Sim Sima. So it would seem that the world has sort of forgotten about his homophobic past, even though he never really officially apologized for what he said about the LGBTQ plus community. In the summer of 2022, Janet Jackson and Beanie Man both performed at Essence Festival of Culture, and I wonder if their paths crossed during that time and if they actually talked to each each other all these years later. But what do you guys think? Do you believe that Janet really had no idea about Beanie Man's offensive music before she sang with him? Let me know in the comments below.